So in that spirit, let's just dive into the next section. Let's okay. start it with a quote. Yeah. The trick to having good ideas is not to sit around in glorious isolation and try to think of big thoughts. The trick is to get more parts on the table, right? That's by Steve Johnson. And he's totally right. You know, there's so many people who have these ideas, but they don't really try to execute on them, right? Tackle it part by part, piece by piece. That's how you get stuff done. And, you know, when it comes to content marketing, one of the first things that I love really doing is uncovering my competitors' business models. See, when you uncover their business models, you can then figure out how you can be monetizing your content. And let me show you some examples of this. One, I love adding my competitors to Ahrefs. So let's say HubSpot could be one of my competitors. I can add in their URL, and yeah, I can get data on there. But what's interesting is if you go to Pages and then click Best Buy Links, I can see, right, what's performing well. And you can see the different types of content. You can see what's doing really well based on links, right? And links hold a lot of weight. You want to see what people love, what they don't love. This will all help you determine, all right, this is what your competitors are doing. You can also go to link domains. When you go into link domains, you can see who's, uh, who's linking in. These are their strategies. For example, if they're linking out to, let's say, Greater, that's their website, Greater, where HubSpot is generating traffic from their content. They're linking out to their Greater, which is then an analysis tool. From the analysis tool, they try to convert you in a lead and a customer into HubSpot. Or if they link out to freestockphotos.org, there must be something there. Why are they doing that? Is it an affiliate push? Is it a site they own? Right? What is it? By finding out all of this, it's really valuable. You then want to review what pages rank really well to see what you can end up doing to do better, right? Because if this is a top page for your competitor, it could be a top page for you too. For example, HubSpot has a lot of popular content pieces. One of them is on video editing software. Now, if you're going after video editing software, cool. You now, know, have, a, you now have a post type that you can look at and be like, I need to create something way better than this. You can then also sign up for their emails. You want to make sure whatever your competitors are doing, you're signing up for their email list so you can see what's happening. When they make a change, when they make a new announcement, when they're doing a pre-sale, you want to be on their list so you know. You can use your email, you can use your Gmail address, whatever it may be. If they have eBooks, you want to end up downloading those strategies so you can see what kind of content they're producing, how they're generating you know, sales. So now let me go into detailed examples. Here's some affiliate examples, right? Here's Wirecutter. They're showing headphones. This is pretty cool. Great way to end up generating sales, right? You can also see Best Portable Girls. They're pushing out new things. That works out quite well for them. If they're pushing it that hard, they must be doing quite well. Here's some other examples. They're linking out to a lot of Amazon pages. If they're linking out to a lot of Amazon pages, that means they're generating a lot of links from Amazon. Here's another example. This is by Outdoor Gear Lab. You can see they're rating the shoes. You click, you buy, they make money. And then when you go put in their site into Ahrefs, you go into the outgoing links in the sidebar, you click on link domains, you can see that they're mainly making money from REI, which is affiliate in their space, and Amazon. Here's some software examples. First one up, Moz. So you can see top pages, and all right, they're pushing people through the uh, SEO tool. They're pushing people through the free tools. They have all these tools, pages that they're trying to drive traffic to. From there, they're then trying to convert people into customers of their Moz product. They'll drive them to their homepage, their product. They try to get you to sign up once you use the tools. It's all great ways that they're making money. They have a blog. What does their blog do? Again, it's pushing people towards their product. Here's another example, Canva. Use their product for free. They have a lot of text. They have a lot of free stuff. They have a ton of stuff going on. They're quite huge now. And they push you to upgrade. You can see what their intentions are, right? They really push hard on getting you to create a design. And throughout the flow, they try to constantly get you to upgrade. So if you put in Canva, into Ahrefs, you can see, again, their top pages. A lot of them are on infographics, which is really popular. 
Another one is on creating logos. A lot of people are looking up the Canvas stuff for creating logos. So here's some podcast examples. My favorite, Pat from Smart Passive Income. He's in extremely well, and he's built his brand reputation off of one main thing. Podcast is crushed it for him, right? And when you type in his URL into Atrus, you look at the top pages, you can see a lot of his podcast or how to find a mastermind group. And that mastermind group and a lot of the courses he's launching, it's all related towards podcasting. He's built his whole business through podcasting. It's done so well for him. Here's another one, Nerdist, right? You can see their podcasts. They get a lot of views. They're extremely popular. Um, and when you put in their top pages, you can see that a lot of their popular pages are content, but one of the most popular ones is their podcast page. It's huge. And this is traffic from Google. That means people Googling specifically for their brand related to the podcast. Here's some consulting examples. If you're a content or a consulting company, you have this content. When I get people to put in their email for a free blueprint or consultation or cheat sheet, right? It's all ways you can end up generating more leads. And sure, some of them won't be qualified, but enough of them will be qualified where it's worth it for you. And when we put this URL into Ahrefs, you can see, right? Eight tips for winning effective consulting proposals. Um, another one is their homepage and it ranks for successful consulting. Another one is nine ways to get more consulting clients. And then they can, you know, sell courses and information and products on consulting, or they can consult you on how to grow a consulting business, which is a great strategy. Your own products. This is one that's one of my favorites. Dr. Axe. Dr. Axe is an amazing online personality, great content from there. He sells you his own products. Multiple $100 million company, amazing business. And Dr. Axe kicks butt with their content. They talk about like probiotic benefits and why you should be taking them. And then from there, boom, they sell you into probiotics. Then they also talk to you about magnesium supplements and why you should be taking them. And then boom, they sell you on their product. That's how they're generating a lot of sales through their content. And when you look at their traffic, look at this graph. It's crazy. They're doing insane amount of growth, right? It's all just from purely educating. They've just been cranking out a ton of content. And Dr. Axe's tactics that they use is pretty much what we shared in our Advanced Content Marketing Summit. And we've added that to your members portal. So if you want to find out how Dr. Axe has just grown through content marketing, watch that video in your members portal. Um, Axe Wellness, you can see this is their revenue, inc uh, the third fastest growing company, right? And that's in their category. And that's crazy, $46 million in revenue. And they're even larger now. I think they're over $100 million in revenue. It's so crazy. You have to keep in mind the Inc. 5000 list, the 2017 list, that means the revenue data is from 2016. Um, so it's a bit behind, right? Or 2015, it's one or the other. So course examples. Amy Porterfield, you guys have all heard about her. She has all these YouTube ads talking about courses. She has content. She's done really well from her podcast. And then from there, she drives people into buying her products. If you look at her top pages, right, a lot of it's related towards her podcast. Her number two page other than her homepage is her podcast. So some action items. Create your, uh, there's content creation template compilation, right? There's an ultimate headline formula, and there's a write, a roundup post draft. I want you to do those three things. And once you start doing those three things and take those actions, you'll be creating content, and then next week we're going to be building links to it. So that's it. Any questions, Vignesh? Um, there is one question, actually one comment from Jim, which was, uh, in your posts, you know, you tend to mix words, pictures, infographics, micrographics, videos, all of it together. Can you talk a little bit more about the, the strategy behind that because that's really powerful? Yeah, it's getting people to engage. So I found that not everyone wants to read all the content. Uh, some people are visual learners, so they're like skimming through the images. I found that some people prefer uh, audio, so I also have video slash I have, you know, you can just listen to audio if you don't want to watch the video. So by having all these content types, people are getting the education one form or another.
Now, of course, if someone went through everything step by step, they're much more likely to do better. But hey, if they can't, then you know they can at least get something by doing one of those content types. Awesome. Uh, one other thing that I've noticed is you always link out to influencers in all of your posts. So is that to get links back from them? A say, lot of or? them do back. A lot of them do share my content. It's more so just citing my sources. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about this earlier. You want to cite your data, so I do that a lot to drive up uh, the authority of my blog post by making it more relevant and authoritative within the space. Awesome. Okay, that's pretty much all the questions I had. If anyone has a question, please type it in the chat box and we will answer them. Uh, we'll wait for maybe, say, 60 seconds, and if, you know, if everyone's good, we're going to see you on the Q&A call. Yeah. So, Neil, uh, is there anything that you would like to say, such as, like, new marketing tests that you've run that you want to share with the audience? <laughs> Uh, so I don't have anything new this week because we've been doing some changes, but I should have some really cool stuff on week eight that you guys haven't seen yet. That's the bonus section where I'm going to, I don't want to reveal everything, but you guys will find out what it is at the very end. Awesome. Okay. Apart from that, uh, no new questions have come through. So I would say it's safe to say, yeah, we can close the session. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. Take care, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.